Puerto Princesa, a home of beautiful and breathtaking views. The pandemic may have stopped a flock of tourists visiting our place, but it opened many chances for the locals to explore the beauty of our own place. One of the places that has given popularity during the pandemic is the Tagluan Bay, where the Candy House Cafe is located. The cafe showcases the beautiful scenic view of Tagluan Bay where sunrise and sunset can be observed while enjoying a hot coffee with friends and loved ones. Surely, this place will be one of the bucket list of the visiting tourists, both locally and internationally. Hello, Grade 9 Dream Learners! Welcome to Puerto Princesa Dream TV, your digital classroom. Come, let's get ready to be amazed and unlock AHA moments with Grade 9 Quarter 2 Chemistry Lessons. I am Teacher Anna. I will be your virtual teacher as we explore the wonderful subatomic world. Aren't you excited? Well, I am. Have a pen and paper handy as we dissect the lesson carefully. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to illustrate electron dot structure of the atom with the valence electrons, compare electronegativity and ionization energy values of metals and nonmetals, infer how transferring and sharing of electrons form compounds, predict the type of bonds formed depending on the involved elements and recognize the types of compounds based on their properties. To check what you already know about the lesson, let's try this activity. I will show you the question, and you are going to choose the letter of the correct answer from the given options. You are given 5 seconds to answer each question, and when you hear this, that means the time is up. Are you ready? Let's start! Directions Listen and analyze the following questions and select the letter of the best answer. Write your answer on your paper. Number 1 which type of elements has lower electronegativity? A. Metal B. Metalloids or semi-metal C. Noble gases and D. Non-metal Number 2 which of the following groups has the greater possibility to donate electrons? A. Group 2A B. Group 4A C. Group 5A and D. Group 8A Number 3. What bond is formed when an electron is being shared, A. Covalent bond, B. Hydrogen bond, C. Ionic bond, and D. Metallic bond. Number 4. 
Number four, in Lua structure, the number of dots depends on the group number the element belongs. How many dots should be placed around the symbol for the Lua structure of carbon? A, four, B, five, C, seven, D, eight. Number 5. Octet rules refers to the tendency of an atom to attain the most stable number of valence electron. How many valence electrons does it require? A4, B5, C7, D8. your answers on the screen. Number 1. A. Number 2. A. Number 3. A. Number 4. A. And number 5. D. Did you answer the questions correctly? If yes, you're awesome. If not, that's fine. Because as we go along with our lesson, we will learn and understand more about this topic. We will be needing the help of the modern periodic table of elements to start with. Notice that it is divided into three main parts, namely metals, semi-metals or metalloids, and non-metal. It is comprised of elements that are not just there sitting in every part, but are arranged and organized in a very orderly manner, depending on the varied atomic properties. Let's reiterate that the elements are arranged in an increasing order of atomic number, thus, it is also arranged in an increasing number of electrons, increasing size, and increasing atomic weight. Based on your previous lesson, you have learned that when you go from top to bottom, the energy levels increase, and if you go from left to right, the number of valence electrons increase as well. Electrons determine the atom's characteristics and properties, especially the valence electrons since they are the ones that bring each unique atomic attitude. We will focus mainly on elements under group 1A, or what we commonly know as the representative elements. In a previous episode, we have emphasized the importance of valence electrons, especially in Bundy. Now, we will tackle the importance further. Metals are located on the left side of the semi-metals or metalloids, while the elements on the right side are the non-metals. Take note that the trend of the number of valence electrons from the left side of the periodic table to the right is increasing. Notice also that the non-metals have a greater number of valence electrons compared to the elements belong in the metal group. Thus, the number of valence electrons accounts to its nature of reactivity. What happens if we take one leg from a chair, or a table, or a bed? Obviously, it wouldn't serve its purpose. Because of the imbalanced number of legs, it would not be able to strongly support the weight that it's supposed to carry and ending up collapsing. If we recall the lesson in grade 8 for balance forces, an object will continually move if the force is acting on it is in balance. The object would move in the direction of the unbalanced force. An object that has balanced forces acting on it is said to be not moving or stable. This notion also applies to atoms or pretty much everything around us holds the same desire to settle. As I believed, everything behaves the same because everything is made up of the same thing, atom.
An atom is said to be stable if the number of valence electrons is equal to 8 electrons according to the octet rule. Noble gases or the elements under group 8A are the most stable elements that every element in the periodic table look up to. Think of an avid fan. They're like celebrities whom we think have got everything and we try our best to copy them since we idolize them. Elements tend to adjust to attain the kind of stability like that of the elements under group 8A. No wonder things around us keeps on evolving. They might not have obtained stability yet. To illustrate the number of valence electrons in each atom, let's use the Lewis structure in order for us to easily see if an atom is stable or not. The structure on your screen is a Lewis symbol for the element argon. A Lewis symbol consists of dots positioned around the symbol of the element. The number of dots represents the number of the atom's valence electrons. For argon, it belongs to group 8A, so it has 8 dots equally distributed around its symbol, showing a very stable configuration of an atom as what the octet rule proposes. Look at how balanced the structure is. From the previous module, we have talked about the valence electrons to have higher energy than those that are configured in the inner part of the atom. Secondly, elements vary in properties because the number of their valence electrons varies. So, with the distance from the nucleus as you go from top to bottom and left to right, and paired valence electrons tend to move around until they become stable. They attain stability and settle once they pair up with other elements' valence electrons. They won't stop interacting until the octet rule is achieved or once they paired up with an element that makes up a total of 8 valence electrons. How do atoms really bond with other atoms? Let's find out. How are they able to react with other elements? Or should I say, what drives electrons to combine with other elements? The Lewis symbol made it all easier to see and understand how atoms bond. Do you know this game? Yes, the tug of war game. But as you can see in the picture, there is an unbalanced number of players, so how would you predict which team will win? Consider also the strength of the players. Even if the other side is outnumbered with one player, boys are naturally stronger than girls, so the fewer side or the left side of the rope is a possibility of winning over the right side. Electrons also play the game tug of war, especially the unstable ones. Let's investigate on the following Lewis symbols below. By merely looking at the two structures, you can observe that sodium is much smaller than chlorine, which you can perceive to be bulky. Well, if we take a look at chlorine, it is really bigger than sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons, while chlorine has 17 electrons. Both atoms are not stable. How many valence electrons does sodium need to satisfy the octet rule? What about chlorine? How many electrons does it need to be stable? Yes, you are right. Sodium has one electron, so it needs seven more electrons, which chlorine possesses. Just like a puzzle, they complete each other. Now, if they are to play the game tug of war, as you notice, Chlorine has 7 strong electrons, while sodium has only 1 strong electron. In the real tug-of-war game, a team must win. In case of atoms, both of them wins. Just that, sodium is more likely to be dragged by chlorine since chlorine is more electronegative than sodium. The ability of an atom to attract electron to itself is called electronegativity. Once the two combine, they achieve stability. 
total of eight valence electrons by forming a compound known as sodium chloride or NaCl or commonly known as table salt. How amazing is that? Sodium as a metal bonds with chlorine which is a non-metal and a gas to form something that is edible and appears to be solid. Life is really unpredictable and full of surprises. The main goal of atoms in combining with other atoms is to become stable, conforming to the octet rule of having eight valence electrons. Therefore, atoms have the tendency to donate or give up their electrons or attract or accept electrons to attain the goal and form a stable compound. When an atom gives up or accepts an electron, it is called ionization. An atom must be ionized, thus energy is either given up or accepted. We knew from the previous lesson that electrons have energy. Therefore, if an atom is unstable, it requires a certain amount of energy to either lose or gain one electron. The energy is referred to as ionization energy. When you want to catch a fish using a hook and a line, you would need an extra energy to pull and catch the fish. At the same time, the fish must exert the same amount of energy not to be captured. If your energy is higher than that of the fish, then you would likely to catch it, then losing it. Bonding in elements also works the same way. Metals having lesser number of valence electrons compared to nonmetals obviously tends to be dragged nearer to the nonmetals. Nonmetals have higher electronegativity than metals. With that, higher electronegativity values, they also require higher ionization energy. That's why it's always resorted to metals being pulled by the nonmetals during bonding. I reiterate, everything behaves the same because we are made up of the same thing, atom. I strongly believe in that line based on my observations on the behavior of each atoms in the periodic table. You would really find something in common with the behavior of the things around us. It also works the same with how atoms bond, just like the following atomic relationships. There are two types of chemical bonding common to elements, the ionic bonding and the covalent bonding. Due to the lesser number of valence electrons, metals tend to have lower values of electronegativity and can easily be dragged by the nonmetals because they only require small amount of ionization energy. If the difference of the electronegativity value is greater than 1.9, which is a substantial difference, there will be a complete transfer of the electron. Metals donate electrons, while nonmetals accept it to form a stable compound bound by ionic bond. Ionic bond is formed by metal giving up electron or electrons, thus making it partially positive known as the cation or positive ion, while metal accepting electron or electrons becoming partially negative or known as anion or negative ion. Hence, the name ionic bond. When ions dissociate in water, they can conduct electricity. However, there are metal to nonmetal compounds that are covalent bonds, most likely to occur with group B elements. Most of them are covalent bonds with some ionic properties. I've only got two, but I can give it all to you. It's not much, but I can accept. It is enough. On the other hand, if there is a negligible difference in the electronegativity, that is when a nonmetal interacts with another nonmetal. 
the energy is almost equal, so none will be pulled. So instead of an electron being transferred, it is just shared, still forming a compound bound by a covalent bond. There are two types of covalent bonds, the polar covalent and the nonpolar covalent bonds. When two different nonmetals interact and resulted in a value of less than 1.9 but not lesser than 0.4 electronegativity value, the covalent bond is said to be polar covalent bond. My love for you as much as you do. I've got a friend in you. We may have differences, but only a little. That doesn't matter. My love is twice bigger. If the electronegativity values are significantly low, less than 0 0.4 to 0, then it is nonpolar covalent bond. Diatomic molecules are bound by nonpolar covalent bonds, having no difference in the electronegativity. Head to toe, I am you. We are identical duo. Flesh and blood come from one. I'll never leave you behind. Hmm, ionic bond is like a toxic relationship for me. One has to sacrifice for their relationship to stay in place. I like a valent bond better. It's like a win-win relationship. How about you? Which atomic relationship do you like? Let's see how much you've understood from our discussion. The next activity is to practice the Lewis structure entitled Ding! Ang Bato! Materials The modern periodic table of elements Pebbles or small stones Eight one-fourth sheets of paper Procedures Step 1. Get your modern periodic table Step 2. Get pebbles or small stones as much as you want Step 3. Let's use lithium from metals Nitrogen from nonmetals and neon from noble gases. Step 4. Write each symbol in the middle of one fourth sheet of paper. Step 5. Now put the pebbles or stones around each symbol depending on the number of valence electron or electrons each of the representative element has, just like the one shown with argon. Step 6. There are a maximum of 8 electrons that you can put around the symbol according to the octet rule. Make sure you place at most 2 stones per side. Step 7. Please consider the structures as you answer the corresponding questions. Guide Questions You are given 5 seconds to answer each guide question. Number 1. How many electron or electrons does or do each of the given elements have, respectively? Number 2. Which from those elements has the highest and the least number of valence electrons? Number 3. Based on the octet rule, were all of the group A elements stable? Number 4. If we follow the octet rule, how many electrons do the elements under group 5A lack to be stable? Number 5. What about the elements from group 1A? How many electrons do they need to become stable as well?
check your answers on the screen. Number 1. Lithium 3 Nitrogen 7 Neon 10 Number 2. Highest Neon Least Lithium Number 3. No Number 4. 3 and number 5, 7. Predict the type of bonds formed depending on the involved elements. If the electronegativity difference is greater than 1.9, there will be complete transfer of electron or electrons, hence an ionic bond is formed. If the electronegativity difference is less than or equal to 0 0.4, then a nonpolar covalent bond is formed. If the electronegativity difference is greater than 0 0.4 but not more than 1.9, then a polar covalent bond is formed. Note, either of the two elements' electronegativity values are the subtrahend or minuend. It doesn't matter. Just take the difference. Predict what bond will form in the following combinations of elements, depending on the difference of the electronegativity values, be it ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent. Let En be electronegativity value. Example, hydrogen and fluoride. En difference, 1.78. Answer, polar covalent. Number 1. Sodium and bromine. En difference, 2.03. Number 2. Lithium and fluorine. En difference, 3.0. Number 3. Iodine and iodine. En difference, 0. Number 4. Hydrogen and sulfur. En difference, 0 0.38. Number 5. Nitrogen and hydrogen. En difference, 0 0.84. You have 1 minute and 30 seconds to answer this activity. Check your answers on the screen. Number 1. Ionic bond. Number 2. Ionic bond. Number 3. Nonpolar covalent bond. Number 4. Nonpolar covalent bond. And number 5. Polar covalent bond. Once more, let's have it as your assignment.
But first, let's summarize the important points in this lesson. Atoms seek stability. That is why they interact with other atoms to satisfy the octet rule. The octet rule is said to be the atom's most stable configuration, attaining a total of eight valence electrons equally distributed around the atom's symbol. The structure is known as the Lewis symbol. In the Lewis symbol, it is easier to see the participating electrons in bonding. Those are the valence electrons of each atom. The number of dots around the symbol is equal to its group number. It is easy to see if an atom is stable or not. The most stable elements are those that are under group 8A, which other elements try to imitate. In achieving the octet rule, elements tend to donate or accept electron depending on the electronegativity value of the element. Electrons carry energy and valence electrons are its energized form. Consequently, the more the number of valence electrons, the higher the electronegativity is needed to attract electrons to itself. If we look at the periodic table of elements, nonmetals have more valence electrons compared to metals. Nonmetal only requires a small amount of energy to fish or attract metals valence electrons while metal would require a significant amount of energy to take all the electrons from the nonmetals to achieve stability. The energy requirement needed to either lose or accept an electron is called the ionization energy. There are two types of chemical bonds, the ionic and the covalent bonds. Ionic bonds are formed when a metal bonds with a nonmetal, while covalent bond is a type of bond formed when a nonmetal bonds with a nonmetal. When the other nonmetal is partially stronger than the other, but still the energy difference is not that high for an electron to be ionized, then it is polar covalent. The other type of covalent bond is nonpolar covalent. It is when the difference of electronegativities of both nonmetals are negligible. Directions. Listen and analyze the following questions and select the letter of the best answer. Write your answer on your paper. Number one. Which type of elements has lower electronegativity? A. Metal. B. Metalloids or semi-metal. C. Noble gases. And D. Non-metal. Number 2. Which of the following groups has the greater possibility to donate electrons? A. Group 2A B. Group 4A C. Group 5A and D. Group 8A Number 3. What bond is formed when an electron is being shared? A. Covalent bond B. Hydrogen bond C. Ionic bond and D. Metallic bond Number 4. In Lewis structure, the number of dots depends on the group number the element belongs. How many dots should be placed around the symbol for the Lewis structure of carbon? A. 4 B. 5 C. 7 D. 8 Number 5. 
octet rules refers to the tendency of an atom to attain the most stable number of valence electrons. How many valence electrons does it require? A4, B5, C7, D8. your answers on the screen. Number 1. A. Number 2. A. Number 3. A. Number 4. A. And number 5. D. Before we end this lesson, I want you to practice more at home for your assignment. Directions. Using the table below, identify the compound is either ionic or covalent compound based on the given properties. Please scan the QR code flash on your screen to download the resources in this activity in print. Number 1. Magnesium chloride, or MgCl2, is a crystalline compound and has a high melting point of 987 Kelvin. Number 2. Phosphorus trichloride, or PCl3, is a yellowish fuming liquid that is highly toxic but not flammable. Number 3. Iron oxide, or Fa2O3, is also commonly known as rust. It does not dissolve in water, but soluble on strong acids. Number 4. Beryllium chloride, or BeCl2, is a solid compound that mostly dissolves in polar solvents. Number 5. Magnesium oxide, or MgO, is a compound that dissociates into ions when dissolved in water. It has high melting point due to its hardness. Write this in a one-hole sheet of paper and submit it to your science teacher. Congratulations, dream learners, for completing this episode. We have unlocked another science lesson that you can apply in your daily lives. I know this pandemic has limited our ability to bond with our friends, classmates, and even teachers. But do you know the best bond it actually allowed to be strengthened? It's the bond with our families and, of course, our faith in God. I hope you didn't let your gadgets steal those opportunities away or at the moment. Put down your phone and savor the moment with your loved ones. Let the bond within your family be stable. Keep discovering and continue learning. For our next episode, we will discuss more of the subatomic particles which emphasizes ionic bonding. This has been your virtual teacher, Anna. See you again in the next episode of Puerto Princesa Dream TV. Stay safe!